Today we'll talk about the exposure control with the Instax Mini 11. Hi, I'm Matej and welcome to my channel, place where we discuss how to use Instax cameras. The Instax cameras are generally super easy to use, but if you want to do something more than just the automatic exposure, it gets a little tricky because a lot of them don't have any controls and you can't do manual exposure easily. In this video, I'll talk about how the exposure works on the Instax Mini 11 and see if you can learn anything from it and see if you can use it to our advantage. The Instax Mini 11 is the same camera as the Instax Mini 40. So anything I talk about in this video or any other videos about the Instax Mini 11, you can use the same thing for the Instax Mini 40. It's just the same camera in a different shell. This one is styled more for kids and the Mini 40 is styled for more adults in like a retro look. So the Mini 11 is the easiest camera from the Instax lineup to use. It is devilishly simple. Uh, all you have to do is you turn on the camera by pushing the this button that opens up the lens. Then you line up your shot and press the shutter button. Uh, the only other uh, control that you have over the camera is that you can turn on the selfie mode. And that's it. There are no other controls. You can turn off the flash. You can uh, do a lighter or darker exposure manually. You have absolutely no control. So let's talk about the specs to see if you can learn something about how to force the camera to do something a little bit more than just the automatic exposure. If I look in the manual, it says the lens is f12.7, uh, so let's say f13. And the electronic shutter goes from one half of a second to one four hundredth of a second. And the exposure control goes from light value of 5.0 to light value of 14.5. Uh, so that's quite a bit of dynamic range. It's almost 10 stops. Let's talk about how the camera calculates exposure. So the camera has a light sensor, which is the sensor up top and also a flash sensor. So the light sensor measures the scene just like any other light meter and calculates the exposure, which is the uh, aperture and also the how fast the shutter speed is. It also has a flash sensor. One thing that's a little bit weird with this camera is that the flash always fires, even if you're in super bright sunlight, it still fires. Uh, it says in the manual, and also I, I, I tried it yesterday. Um, it was super bright and sunny here in the Alps, and it, the flash was still firing every time. So what it does, the camera measures the light, calculates the exposure, also uh, uh, flashes every time you have an exposure. So the flash fires, the light travels from the flash to the subject, bounces off back to the camera. The flash sensor measures the light that bounced off, and based on how much bounced off, it uh, modulates the flash power. So if you are really close to your camera, like during a selfie, the flash will fire at a small power. If you are super far away, the flash will fire as much as it can. But there is a limit of how much the flash can reach. In the manual, it says the effective flash range is 0.3 to 2.7 meters. So keep that in mind. So if you are past uh, 10 feet, the flash will do nothing. So if you want to take flash pictures, be somewhere between one foot and 10 feet away. One thing they don't talk about in the manual is uh, whether the aperture is always uh, f13 or does it close uh, even even smaller than the f13 or f12.7. F so I was trying to do the math where uh, let's say uh, one half of a second at f13 is LV 5.0 and then if you go by stops all the way to one four hundredth of a second so let's say one half is LV 5 one quarter of a second is LV6, all the way to one four hundredth of a second, we'll get about LV of 12.5. So based on this, I assume that the shutter closes down for another two stops. So from F13 to F18, that would be one stop, and then from F18 to F25. So to test the assumptions regarding the aperture and the shutter speed, I tried to take slow-mo videos of the camera taking exposures. So what I did, I opened the camera while it was on, when I didn't have film. Now I have film in there, so I don't wanna do that. And then I put in the iPhone inside of the camera and I did slow-mo videos while I was taking exposures. So I did this a couple different ways. Uh, one way I did it, I went outside to make sure that I had really a lot of light, so I pointed to the sun. And I tried to take the shortest possible exposure with the smallest aperture. So when I took slow-mo videos of the camera taking exposures uh, doing really bright sunlight, so what I found that the camera opens the shutter only for one frame, even at uh, 240 FPS, which is the fastest that my iPhone shoots. And I did this uh, multiple times and during the really bright exposures, the camera never opens the aperture all the way uh, when it's bright out. But it's not like a closed circular aperture as you would see in the normal lenses. It's kind of like a sliver of light. And then I also did the opposite. I wanted to take the longest possible exposure. To do so, I covered the light sensor and the flash sensor with the uh, gaffer tape. So now the camera thinks it's in a dark cave. So it should open the aperture all the way to let the most light in and it should uh, use the sh longest possible shutter speed. 
So presumably that should be the one half of a second. I took videos of the shutter at slow-mo speeds and I wasn't getting the half a second. It was more like a third of a second. So then I also took videos at 24 FPS and I found that the shutter is open for nine frames uh, during a 24 FPS video. So based on my experiments, the slowest shutter speed that the camera uses is like more like one third of a second and not that one half, unless I'm doing something wrong in my tests. So it's somewhere between one and a half and one third. Uh, in my other experiments, I'll assume it's one half and just go with the manual value. If uh, everything is a little bit underexposed, then uh, I was correct and the camera is using one third. But the other thing I saw is that the flash always fires at the end of the exposure. So this camera is essentially using a rear curtain uh, flash sync or a second curtain flash sync. So to explain this to people who are not super familiar with photography, when you're taking a really long exposure and you're also using flash, so you open the shutter and then the time passes and then you close the shutter. So you have options on when you're gonna fire the flash. You can fire the flash at the beginning of exposure or the end of exposure or the middle of exposure. Pretty much all cameras use either they fire the flash at the beginning of exposure or the end of the exposure. So the beginning of the exposure is the front curtain or the first curtain uh, flash sync and the end of the exposure is the second curtain or uh, rear curtain flash sync. Generally, I think people prefer a uh, second curtain flash sync because what essentially happens is, let's say you have something that's moving, then you will have uh, the trails of light behind the object and then you will take a flash so you will, it will look like uh, the object is sharp and there will be trail of light behind it. If you have a front curtain flash sync, you'll freeze the subject and then let's say if there is any light on it, let's say cars with um, headlights, then the headlights will kind of continue, so it will look weird. So the rear curtain flash sync is generally much better, and this camera has the rear curtain flash sync. If you made it all the way this far in the video, thank you very much. Um, maybe consider subscribing if you are into uh, weird things like this. Uh, so you might be wondering, what is the point of all this? I mean, this is a super simple, automatic camera, just let it be, let it take pictures, push the button and take a picture. The ultimate goal is to push this camera to be able to take some uh, manual exposures. So the only way that I can see is to uh, take manual exposures to this camera is to make it uh, make the camera blind, so it'll cover both of the light sensors, and the, so the light and the flash sensor, and then also cover the flash. So in order to cover the flash, I can use uh, gaffer tape. I have this giant uh, roll of black gaffer tape. I can put some links in the description. So gaffer tape is really nice. You can just rip it off like this, and then you have a nice uh, strip. I made it strip a little bit too big, so let's make it a little bit smaller. And now we can cover the, the flash like this. Boom. When you do this, make sure you don't cover the film ejection slot, but other than that, it should be pretty good. Uh, if you're still getting some flashlight through that, you can put two uh, layers of the black gaffer tape. So the difference between gaffer tape and duct tape is that once you peel off gaffer tape, it should leave no residue. So this is used by um, professionals on the light sets. They, I think they use it to bundle cables. So if I have the camera set up like this, uh, it's a manual camera with single setting. It should take pictures at f12.7 or uh, f13 with shutter speed of one half of a second. If I find that all these are underexposed, then it's probably using the one third of a second that I measured and then I'll change it to one third of a second. So that's one option. So you can use it as a single setting manual camera. If you, if you can dial your lights or if you can move closer and further from a window, uh, you might be able to get uh, the perfect exposure as long as your subject doesn't move because because half a second is a pretty slow uh, shutter speed. Another manual option is to uh, still cover the light and flash sensors so the camera is uh, forcing the exposure to half a second and f12.7 but instead of covering the flash we can use a remote uh, flash trigger. So this is a flash trigger with uh, Viltrox FC-8N. Uh, I don't think this is very expensive. I think it was like uh, $20. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. And what this does is that once it receives a flashlight in, in, this, uh, little light, uh, in this little sensor, it essentially acts like a hot shoe. So you can put any uh, flash here and it will fire the flash. So what we can do is we can uh, line up the sensor with the flash like this, then duct tape it around, and then this camera will work uh, at uh, one half of a second at f12.7 and then we can dial the flash to anything we want. So I'll try to make a video about that to see if we can uh, control the flash manually and see if we can get some good exposures. In summary, what did we learn? Well, uh, to be honest, we didn't learn all that much. We know that the camera is super simple, it's fully automatic. One thing we did learn, I guess it's in the manual, but I'm not sure everybody knew, is that the flash always fires. No matter how bright it is, you might be in the Sahara, the sun is baking you, 
it will still fire. The one big thing I learned in this video is that the flash fires at the end of the exposure. So it's a rear curtain uh, shutter sink. So in summer, the only way to shoot manual is to blind the camera, cover the light sensors, and then you get that one uh, setting, which would be half a second at F13. I'll try to shoot some portraits without flash. I also try to shoot some portraits uh, with flash and see what I can get. In general, if you want to mess around with Instax cameras like this, a much better bet is the old uh, Instax cameras, which is the Instax Mini 8 or Instax Mini 9. I believe that the lens is the same. It's uh, still a 60 millimeter lens with uh, f12.7. Uh, it does not have the selfie function, so you're limited to how close you can get to the camera. This one can only shoot from uh, uh, 0.6 meters, so it's two feet. The Instax Mini 11 can shoot from uh, one foot. Uh, there are some close-up lenses. I had one in the back in the day, but it didn't do anything. So uh, if you have a good one, um, put a link down below. I'll, I'll buy it and try it out. So one really cool thing about the Instax Mini 8 or 9 is that the shutter speed is always uh, 1 60th of a second. And all of these uh, are different aperture values. So the inside is the F13 and then it goes up. I'll, I'll put a table on the screen what these apertures are. If you want to mess around with Instax cameras and you want to do some creative manual exposures, I highly recommend to buy the Instax Mini 8 or 9 over the Instax Mini 11. This one is fantastic for kids, for uh, automatic exposures, just walking around, taking pictures, having some fun. If you want to do something more, something creative, and you have a really high tolerance for uh, messed up exposures, uh, get this one and then you can uh, play around with it. Again, you will have to cover the sensors. Um, maybe I'll do also a video on this one, on how to do some uh, exposures with uh, flashes. That's all for today. If you stayed all the way to the end, thank you so much. It helps the YouTube algorithm to push the video to more viewers if people stay uh, with the video longer. Uh, if you are not subscribed yet, consider subscribing. There will be lots more videos coming. I'm planning to make a lot more videos about how to use these cameras. I have a lot of the Instax cameras. I have the Instax Mini 11, the Instax Mini 8, I have the Lee Play, also the Instax Wide, I have uh, also the Wide Printer and some Lomo cameras. Uh, so I'm planning to make a lot more videos about how to use Instax. Thanks for watching.